Welcome to this presentation of using the Activity Enterprise Suite to call RESTful web services without writing any code. Nowadays, virtually every workflow we create needs to integrate with third-party services. Leveraging RESTful calls is a common mechanism to perform that integration. Luckily, Activity Enterprise enables us to perform that type of integration without programming any code. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to create an endpoint for our RESTful service. To do that, I have logged into the Enterprise Suite and I'm clicking on Identity Management. I have to be logged in as an administrator. I can go to the Tenants tab and then go to the Endpoints section underneath the Tenants tab. Here's where the endpoints go. I'm going to click plus and add a new endpoint. This will be for a weather service. It's HTTP API wonderground.com and there's the path I need for that particular RESTful service. I click Save and that's it. That's everything I need to do to create the base endpoint for RESTful service. Next, let's create our workflow. I've logged into Activity. I'm going to go to the Kickstart app and create a new process. I will call it Get Weather Details. And I will use the default BPMN editor. The goal of this process is to accept a zip code from a user and show the weather detail for that zip code. To get started, we're going to create a new form um, based on this start task. We'll call it get zip code form. This will be a very simple form, just one text box. Say, please enter your zip code. I'm going to override the ID to give it a, a bit more friendly of an ID in case we have to use it later. And let's validate the form. We can see that there are no errors, and I will save it. And save and close. Next, we have to create our RESTful task. So let's go to the tree on the left. Under Activities, there is a REST call task. I'll drag that over, and I'll, I'll just wire that together. OK, so you'll notice on this REST task that there are a number of different properties. The endpoint is the first thing we'll have to configure. This endpoint, I'll use a get method. Um, and I'll choose the endpoint we created earlier. Okay. Now I can see up here the endpoint and the URL are all put together and ready to test. I'm going to add some parameters to this URL. Um, I need to get the zip code. Go to form field, and this is the actual text box on the first form that we created. I'm going to choose that. And then due to the format of this RESTful service, it needs an extension of .json. And that's just for this RESTful service. Every RESTful service could have something different. Um, but this tells the service to produce a JSON message back, which we will use to parse the data. Let's test it. Because I put a parameter in there, and it's related to a form, it's smart enough to know what I'm asking for. So I'm going to put in a zip code for Parsippany, New Jersey. And I click Test, and I can get the message back, and I can see that I'm getting the full JSON message back that I am expecting. Let's click Save. Now that we've told the task how to get the data, we have to configure it to do something with that data. So we'll go to the response mapping of the task. And I'm going to create a few different properties here to get the data from the message we get back from the RESTful call and put it into process variables, variables that are available to the rest of the workflow. So the first property I'm going to do is going to be for the zip code that is coming back. Now you'll notice from the path, this is actually the path in the JSON message. So if we looked at the JSON message like a tree, every different part of this text is a different node of that tree, starting with current observation, then display location, then zip. I'm going to take that data from the message and put it into a variable called zip. I'll create another property to get the city name. 
and this is the syntax to get the city name from the message, but I'll put it into a simple variable named city. The next property I will enter is for the temperature, and I'll put that into a variable named temp. And lastly, I'll try to get anything called the now cast, basically the current weather information. If there's additional detail that the message has, I'll get that information and another simple variable called nowcast. So that's all I've had to do to configure this RESTful call task to be able to go to the weather service, get information, put it back into the workflow process to be available for other parts of the process. Now let's create a user task to display the data that we're getting back to the user. So I've given the task a name, display weather data. Um, I'm going to create a form for this task now. And I will call it display weather data form. Now let's configure the form to display the data that we are retrieving from the rest call task. I'll scroll down to the controls and choose the display value control. Let's click Edit. I'll give it a name of zip code. And I'm going to choose the variable option. This will show us the variables that were returned from that response mapping in the RESTful service. Click Close. Drag another display value to the form. I'll edit this and choose the variable tab and then choose the city. Close. I'm going to configure this two-column layout to change to a three-column layout just to make it a little nicer to look at. And one more display value. Let's edit that. Choose variable and then choose temperature. Okay, and now just one more display value, and this will be for the, the now cast. I'll make this into a one column layout, just in case there's a lot of information. Usually this field seems to be empty, but um, just in case. So choose variable, choose now cast, and close. And I've got the form laid out. I'm going to validate the form. Everything's okay. And I will save it and then save and close. All that's left to complete our workflow is to add an end task. I will validate. Everything's OK. Save, save, and close. Now that we've completed configuring our workflow, we need to create an app to hold that workflow so that it can be used by users. So let's go to Apps, Create App, and we'll enter the name. Get weather by zip code. App. Click create. And then we have to edit the included models. This is where we get to choose the workflow that we just created. Click close. And then save. And I'm going to click publish as well. So I hit save and close. And now this app will be published so it is available for users to use. Now let's configure the app to be shown on our dashboard. I'll click up the top to go to my dashboard, click the plus sign, choose our app, Get Weather by Zip Code, click Deploy. Now it is available for us to use. So let's give it a try. I'm going to click the Get Weather by Zip Code app. I'll click the Start link. There's only one process in this app, so we don't need to select the process. And I'll enter the zip code for Persephone and click Start Process we can see that the process has started. It's going out to the RESTful service in the background, getting that data back, and then it's going to bring it back to the new task that it will create. If I wait long enough, it'll show up here, but I can just click Processes to get that data to show up. The Display Weather Data task is here. If I click on this task, 
I will see that the data has shown up. I can see the zip code, the city, the current temperature, and there is no more detail because the actual feed didn't have any more detail in that field. Click complete, and then we are all done. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Please feel free to reach out to us and see how we can help you like we have helped our clients.